At the start of the new millennium, University of the Nations is multiplying all over the world. Every year, thousands of students are trained and prepared to take the gospel into each and every area of society. Behind this vibrant growth, there is a faithful man that gave up his brilliant scientific career to help design YWAM's global university. For 23 years, Dr. Howard Molmstadt has been the driving force that brought the U of N to its fruitful present. When I look at the University of the Nations, I see that God was developing this from the beginning. By 1978, 40 locations around the world, and by 1988, though, we, we had 120. By 1998, we had 250 locations and we were now in 110 countries around the world. Could this have been to this point without Howard? No. Howard has been the heart, the core of this development. In 1977, God had been speaking to YWAM's founder, Lauren Cunningham, and a group of leaders about starting a Christian university. It was at that time that Lauren met Dr. Howard Malmstead, a prestigious professor at University of Illinois, who had worldwide recognition for his pioneering research work in several areas of science and technology. We sat in an empty room on campus, and it was in this new, <laughs> a new hotel to us, but it was old and torn down. There were no carpets on the floor. All we had in our apartment, Darlene and I just had two metal chairs. Howard was sitting on one, I'm sitting on the other, and everything else is empty. And I'm saying to this world famous educator, a man that has written 13 textbooks that are used in graduate schools in over 100 nations of the world. And I'm sitting there with him. And I said, uh, Howard, God wants us to have a university from YWAM. He said, yes, I know that. And I was shocked. I said, you know that? because I knew no one had been told yet. It was a highly secretive thing. He said, yes, God told me that last spring. At one point in my own college, Wheaton College, we were installing a new instrument. And one of the technicians who was installing it, who was from the outside, asked me if I knew what had happened to Howard Malmstead. And I said, no, I didn't know that anything had happened to Howard. And he said, well, Howard Malmstead has uh, gone completely crazy and has gone off to Hawaii to be a hippie. Uh, that seemed to me a little surprising. I knew enough about Howard to know that he wasn't the kind of a person that would do that. So I contacted him to find out exactly what was going on. Uh, he then told me that in fact uh, he had not uh, lost his mind but was actually working in Hawaii to pioneer a Christian university. But Howard has a reputation for quality work with students and he, he took that reputation as a professional at a university, University of Illinois, and he transferred that to the University of the Nations. Howard Malmstead brought his extensive experience into the development of the new university. He also brought the visionary and pioneering spirit that had been his trademark during his 30 years of scientific work. What strikes me a lot of, about Howard here at uh, the Kona campus is he'll be eating in the dining area, just sitting there eating his meal. A student will sit down next to him, oh, hi, Howard. Uh, how are you doing, Howard? And he knows many of them by name. Many of them don't have a clue that this is a PhD scientist with numerous achievements, many awards, because he treats them as equals. Howard Malmstadt is a name that most, most everybody knows within the scientific community, especially among chemists, because he was the person that really pioneered putting electronics with laboratory instrumentation. And so he was able to, to put electronic measurement with simple laboratory equipment, and that was really the first, th first time that, that had been done. The best way to explain how the scientific community appreciates Dr. Howard Malmstadt is by the many awards they've given him. It's one thing to say nice things about a scientist, it's another to actually get together enough scientists who agree that a particular individual deserves an award, and Howard has received numerous awards over the, year, over the years in chemistry and spectroscopy. He received the American Chemical Society Chemical Instrumentation Award, the ISA Award in Education, the ACS Fisher Award in Analytical Chemistry, the Pittsburgh Conference Outstanding Chemist Award, the Fulbright Hayes Distinguished Professor Award, the American Chemical Society Analytical Division Excellence in Teaching Award, 
the Anna Kim Award, that was in 1987. Then more recently, he's received another major award from the American Chemical Society. Howard has an incredible visionary uh, quality. He has always looked to the future. He has prophesied things uh, long before they've come, uh, actually come into being. That microtechnology will transform society. On a small quarter inch chip, literally thousands and tens of thousands of electronic circuits can be etched, which will provide the computing power of a whole room full of electronics gear of 25 years ago. It is predicted that within a few years that a child in the morning will have a home computer that he sits at to go through some of his lessons. He'll go to school, and in every classroom there will be microcomputers which he'll work with, and following school he'll work with more microcomputers. He's always ahead in terms of uh, what he's thinking, but he's always on track and he's always on target. He has really masterminded the University of the Nations. It was really his original concepts, I think under the direction of the Holy Spirit, that uh, produced the master plan, produced the curriculum, produced the approach, uh, produced the whole of what we know of University of the Nations. He created the spine of the University of the Nations, that is the academic parts of it that would make it all work. And never before in all of history has there ever been a university that was truly global. Universities, uh, even at the best, would have one campus with a few extension campuses, three, four, five. But this is a university that is not one campus with extensions. This is the University of the Nations that is at the same time in nations all over the world, and yet it's one university. So it's a brand new creative act that came together with the word of the Lord, but with Howard's expertise. I really enjoyed uh, the community life that he designed for the U of N courses here, uh, the way we are always relating, relating to different people from different countries, different churches, different ages, different backgrounds, and it's so rich. And that's something that you don't find in any other universities in the world. Coming from Asia, I always went to schools based on the traditional British education system. I want to thank Howard Mumstead for bringing in the modular education system to the University of the Nations because in a very short time I was able to concentrate 100% in my area of interest. The thing that really amazes us uh, about the University of the Nations is that there is always room for new visions. And uh, we believe that the motivation you see in students and staff has to do with the way Howard Mumstead designed the curriculum for this university. Well, one thing that I appreciate the most about the University of the Nations is the teacher-student interaction. It's helped me uh, learn more and also grow in the Lord more. And I just want to thank Howard Momstadt for making that priority in the University of the Nations because it's really set apart the University of the Nations from other universities. During my schools, I realized that I learned a lot. And from University of the Nation, I got a big opportunity to experience language and cultures and living in community. So it helped me to realize how much I appreciate for the founder, especially Howard Mumstead, thank you so much for his obedience that made his vision become reality and this is producing food in my life. Thank God for Howard Mumstead.